Hey, it's Pete here, and today I wanted to look at the evolution of bridge systems. How did we actually get to where we are today? With all the complicated methods we have, they've all been step-by-step -step sort of increasing, adding on to other people's conventions. So here I wanted to jump back and look what was bridge like back in the 1930s when Contract Bridge was just developing and what sort of advancements were actually made. So let's jump in and take a look at just how a couple of hands were actually bid. And then I want to go through and talk about when were different conventions made and uh, added in and uh, what sort of developments were made throughout the decades. So here, uh, I wanted to highlight a couple of hands from uh, the 1930s. So firstly, this is like a real bidding problem for South. They've actually got 18 high card points and a three, four, five, one shape. And it gets pretty awkward where after you start with one diamond and they overcall one heart, uh, what would actually follow? So here, the way that this hand was actually bid at the time was it then went pass, pass, and South has a pretty difficult problem. What would you actually do? So here they elected to double, they went pass and they uh, north bid a spade, they went pass and they then bid one no trump, and then uh, north got back in there with two clubs, and then they actually opted to bid three no trumps and get to play there. Now when reading the article of the play of this one, they, <laughs> they didn't go into too much depth, they actually just said the queen of hearts was led and they make nine tricks. And just like having a quick look at this, I'm like, I, I see four spades, I see two hearts for six, I see a diamond for, and it looks like if you try and build on diamonds too much with the diamonds both offside, it looks like you'll lose two diamonds, you'll lose two gloves and maybe a heart. So I find this one like, and I've got nine tricks is a, a little bit skeptical. Anyway, uh, I thought this was an interesting approach to how they bid it. I wanted to bring up how a modern day approach might be, and it's still a difficult hand, but uh, the one notable difference here is I think North would actually just start with a negative double. And here, South has a couple of interesting choices. One I can see at the vulnerability is they might choose a bit of a frisky pass here and go after their vulnerable opponents. Or otherwise, you might just choose to rebid two no trumps, which would be 18, 19 balanced and you get to three no trumps that way. So there are a couple of different approaches that I see across the years. And the next point I wanna highlight is more about slam bidding. So here, North and South have fabulous hands and uh, the auction that happened at the table was it went one diamond, uh, went one heart, and here North rebid three diamonds, and then it went six no trumps by South, and it went seven no trumps. Now, seven no trumps is like a great contract, but this is far from scientific bidding here. But I think this really illustrates how the different approaches would actually go across the years. So here, um, in the modern days, it's still not that easy to actually try and bid these two hands. If you, you and your partnership give this a try, it's difficult to actually navigate. Now, uh, a couple of different approaches that might actually happen here is that uh, maybe North actually shows their clubs. Maybe they bid uh, three clubs. Also, uh, if they do bid three diamonds, then uh, here, South might just bid three hearts, which often would be forcing at these stages. It might then go three no trumps, and it might be difficult to try and untangle this, uh, but you could see that uh, if North South actually managed to find their club fit, I could actually see a more a sort of slower, more developed way to actually bid to the potential Grand Slam here. Uh, but really awkward one, but you can see their approach was very natural for how they actually bid to seven no trumps. But let's jump in and take a look at how some of the systems, what did they actually used to look like? So if we go look back at the 1930s, one of the most popular systems was the Colbertson system. And here's a book by Eli Culbertson. And you can see he's very humble here. I love the tagline at the bottom, world's greatest authority on contract bridge. But uh, what you can see here is one of the things that's changed a lot over the years is how we actually evaluate hands. What was actually recommended here was they had their, their honor trick tables. Now, just like having a glance at this, uh, it's sort of like hard to wrap my head around how all of this adds on compared to what we actually have today, where you count like four, three, two, one. So while some things have gotten a lot more complicated in how we actually bid things, other things have uh, been refined and sort of simplified and more sort of streamlined approach. 
But with what honor tricks actually were, was basically you needed like six honor tricks for a game. And here they described something called the rule of eight, which was this general principle that of the 13 tricks that were won uh, throughout a bridge hand, four were with aces, four were with other honors, and five were with small cards. And they'll try to use these honor tricks to gauge how high you should actually go. Now, something that uh, I have about general approaches here was what I found curious is that their structure for what hands can actually open one no trump. So in the Colbertson method, you would only open one no trump with four three 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 shapes. Outside of that, they love bidding suits. And what they introduced there was the approach principle, which is sort of like the slow exploration of different suits as you go on. Other notable thing from this time is what's called the four five no trump convention. Uh, which is where you bid four no trumps when you hold three aces or two aces and a king of a suit that's being bid. Uh, it's kind of like the precursor to Blackwood. Uh, but you can see how this is another example of something that's pretty complicated, but has actually managed to be uh, streamlined uh, down a bit. Uh, there were other systems developing around the same time. And one I want to touch on is the official system. Uh, this is like derives a lot from uh, the Colbertson system. Uh, one of the important things is Milton C. Work, featured here. The official system advocated for the 4 3 2 1 point count system. Uh, and this wasn't invented by uh, Milton Work, uh, but uh, he, he initially disliked it for quite a while. And then he was a really strong advocate of it and he was trying to popularize it. Um, in the sort of late 20s. Uh, so it was there around the same time as the Colbertson on a trick method. And it, he was such a strong advocate, it became known as the work point count system. Uh, but I feel like it really took off uh, when Charles Goran got it. And Charles Goran was actually an employee of Milton C. Work. Uh, other systems uh, that were about at the same time were ACOL. ACOL, which isn't actually an acronym, it's just the name of the street where the bridge club was actually located, uh, was in the mid-30s. And what uh, ACOL had was it, when it initially came out, it had a variable no trump. So uh, you see these things come back uh, again. So what they used to play was, uh, for ACOL, they had a 13 to 15 no trump, which was weak, but, you know, we've probably made it weaker these days. And uh, they had that when not vulnerable, and when vulnerable, they had 16 to 18 uh, points. So you can see that people are already adapting based on vulnerability. Other things that were notable in ACO was that fourth suit forcing as a convention was played, and they also used two clubs as a strong bid. So these sorts of bids were uh, always around, even uh, way back then. And the final one from the uh, 30s that I wanted to bring up was wreaths one over one. It already had the idea of light openings in third seat. So you know how some people shade points in third seat openings? This was done all the way back in the 30s as well. So I've got some interesting photos here. Uh, this first one is like this cropped photo uh, where there's four players who won a tournament, but you can see this box outline and they actually used that later for this news article. Uh, there's actually a fight that was between P. House Sims and Oswald Jacoby. And uh, I think my favorite thing from this is these news articles here. And if you look at the article on the right, uh, it said, he lifted his ample bulk. He weighs no less than 280 and advanced on Jacoby, accusing him of bit unethical tactics. Uh, but they actually hit each other and there was a fight and it made the news. And uh, this was a photo that uh, if you go back to the crop, they just wanted to highlight the left and the right, uh, that they're on the same team, but they actually uh, cropped out. Poor David Bernstein. But we've also got a photo here and here, uh, Harold Vanderbilt, uh, who the tournament was actually named after, actually won uh, the tournament uh, the fifth year that it was actually run. Uh, so he donated the uh, the trophy for the tournament and actually managed to win here. And we've got another photo from the time which also includes, which includes Oswald Jacoby, Howard Schenken, David Bernstein and MT Gottlieb playing bridge there. So I just wanted to highlight some photos of what it looked like back in uh, this time, uh, bringing you back into the past. Also, uh, during the 30s, there were some other conventions uh, that uh, came up. Uh, so here we talked about the 4-5 no Trump approach uh, advised by Eli Colbertson, but Blackwood was also coming about. 
sort of in the early 30s, I think 1933 was when it was first uh, invented, uh, but it wasn't really widely known until the late 30s that Blackwood was actually uh, coming about as a convention. Also, we're talking about how Culbertson only used to open one note trump with four 333 shapes. Well, that was actually prior to the invention of stamen, but that also happened in uh, the 30s as well. So the idea of using two clubs in response to one note trumps uh, to check for uh, majors, uh, the first player to actually publicize that sort of style was uh, Ewart Kempson in the early 1930s. Uh, but the way we actually play stamen now was said to be invented by George Repeat, a partner of Sam Stamen, uh, and also simultaneously uh, JTH Marks in England. Um, but Sam Stamen was the one who actually popularized it and got his name uh, attached to it. George Repeat was like less interested in popularizing and just more about uh, enjoying the benefits of its use. So I uh, was happy uh, for Stamen to get its namesake. So that's lots of what happened in bridge in the 1930s. Moving into the 1940s, this is when sort of Goran was first uh, published. Uh, in 1944, it came into there. And uh, Goran sort of followed the uh, early philosophy of Colbertson's uh, forcing approach, um, sort of like slow and uh, steady sort of investigating for fits. But one of the main points of this is it made the 4-3-2-1 a hand evaluation technique that which is used pretty much everywhere in bridge today. This is uh, really where it sort of uh, hit home and became really, really popular. Moving into the 1950s, this is when uh, systems like Kaplan Shinewall and Roth Stone were used. So what Kaplan and Shinewald brought to the table with it was uh, aimed at more precisely trying to show your points on all the bids. It also added things uh, with inverted minors and had other uh, features such as unusual two-no trumps and Michael's Q-bid and also Landy as a defense to one-no trump. Uh, these all popped up in uh, Kaplan and Shinewald. Uh, Roth Stone also in the late uh, 50s uh, had things like the forcing one no trump. So for people that play two over one, uh, this is sort of like an early uh, touch to this. Also, something that I really appreciate is they mentioned their love of 6-4 shapes. I love 6-4 shapes here. They actually in this uh, describe how much they actually enjoy 6-4 shapes as well. It is when transfers also uh, came into play got some more cool photos from the 50s and you know they really showed that you can really enjoy yourself and play bridge at the same time where they're playing bridge in the pool and here we've got Oswald Jacobi, Harry Fishbone, uh, Charles Gorin and Alvin Roth uh, playing bridge in the pool. It was like if you look back in the other tables there's also other people playing there in the pool it's just where a tournament was. I think it's a fantastic idea and they also had an interesting uh, champs versus the chimps match where they had Oswald Jacoby and Charles Goran actually playing against a couple of chimpanzees. And here you can actually see them passing a card under the table. Uh, the chimpanzees got uh, the ace of spades in their foot there. Moving into the 60s, this is when actually lots of strong club systems really started to pop up. Uh, but this wasn't the first introduction of strong club. Uh, there was actually something called the Vanderbilt Club, which right at the beginning uh, there had uh, strong club systems. And uh, basically it was forgotten for a few decades, but then revitalized here. So we've got the Neapolitan uh, or blue team club played by the uh, Italians. What this really introduced was a strong 17 plus club. And they had uh, responses showing uh, controls where you might have two for an ace or one for a king. And their other bids were actually uh, limited openings. Similar time to this was also the introduction of Precision by C.C. Way. And also a relay system by Pierre Gaston, which uh, introduced ideas of like when you open a strong club, having a one diamond negative response and relay bids, which are more like asking and response sorts of questions that actually popped up there. And I think this has given us like a good understanding of like where lots of our systems come and where some of the absolutely fundamental conventions that we've actually played have grown across the years and just seeing that they've been laid on top of each other's and different approaches. But we've had some uh, really interesting stuff 
right from the early days of Contract Bridge, and they've added in more and more stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into where systems came from and how they developed in those early years and all the way through to the 60s. In these later years, there's been conventions added on, but you can see where these general system structures actually really came from. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.